you know, getting them over the hump, getting them to study, and then keeping them studying because, again, 90% of traders lose money. I have a few millionaire students, but most of them aren't going to become millionaires right away um, for whatever reason. I mean, there's so many different ways to fail in trading. So I have to just keep them learning, and I have to really emphasize that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, we created our own software called Stocks to Trade, where people can basically practice trading uh, using like paper money, like a fantasy stock market. And that way, they're not risking losing anything. They can practice and learn and get better. That's been a very good aid for keeping students on the path longer. And it's also beneficial for them. It's not just about keeping students. Like, I don't want the most number of students. My team and I are kind of overwhelmed. I also work with my parents. Um, and we're like a little family business. It's kind of interesting. My dad and I fight all the time um, over like birthday dinners. My mom is like, can't we just enjoy dinner? Um, so it's good to be real, but there are also issues with, with scaling and, you know, trying to do the best that you can and provide the most value to your customers. If I just got everybody in the door and then provided no value, they would just leave all at once. Yeah, consistent value is, is, is so important. And uh, just thinking about, you know, obviously you've come from a, a successful trader and you've decided to become, become a teacher. Um, what did you, you know, do to first get started um, with your, your online membership? Yeah, um, I was featured on this TV show called Wall Street Warriors. Um, it was basically a reality TV show. I was drunk in every episode, so I was funny. And that separated me from the rest of the boring finance people. And everyone started messaging me, hey, I want to learn. So I was like, I mean, I'll, I'll try to teach. I had no idea. I had no intention of becoming a teacher, but I thought that there might be demand based on the emails. So I started the teaching business. I'm very fortunate. I'm kind of like Forrest Gump. Good things just seem to happen to me. Right when I got started teaching, there was a website called Covester that allowed you to verify your trades. Um, so they would tap into your brokerage account and basically see you know, what you're doing. And I became the number one ranked trader out of 60,000 traders on Covester. One by one, most bloggers and most traders left the service because you could see that they weren't that good. And I proved myself with performance over several years. Um, for a small time period, Covester later got acquired and they changed their business model. But when you Googled the word Covester, Timothy Sykes would pop up first because I was, I was so like using them like, oh my God. I'm real, you can see this, I'm verified, 60,000 other traders behind me. Um, and that was a big thing when, okay, I had a small TV audience that wanted to learn to trade, but actually backing it up with performance um, in, with a whole third party, that was, that was fantastic. And that got me my first 1,000 students. That, that, that's interesting because you, there are a lot of teachers out there or uh, membership site owners who maybe aren't the expert, they aren't the number one in the industry. Uh, how, like, what would you say to people who um, maybe don't feel that they have the ability to become, you know, number one in their industry and then therefore don't necessarily feel that they have the right to be a teacher? Yeah, you know, you don't have to be number one, okay? I'm number one on this little online website. I'm not the number one trader in the world. Um, I have a very small niche. You know, I trade penny stocks. The, the vast majority of the world hates on these stocks. So I'm a niche player, but I also had a lot of experience. Before I started teaching, you know, I was trading for several years. So, and I knew the, the pains of not having a teacher. So don't feel like you have to be the best. Just feel like you have to actually be able to deliver value and expertise. I would not recommend someone just starting up a membership site who has no expertise, uh, no knowledge. And if you do, then partner with somebody like who's a veteran in the industry and kind of mold their knowledge, mold their expertise into a product. You need to deliver something, um, whether you're the best or you're the second best or you're even just good. Just being real adds value. Uh, you know, there's so many fakers, especially with these membership sites, and you know they, they think that they're just going to last because people are going to forget to cancel their memberships and like they they you know put all these weird things in like the the members area where they just get charged for life like that's not a good business just provide good information it's so easy to be real there's so many different scammers and they think that it's so hard to be real if you're just honest especially about your mistakes say like okay I'm not the number one guy but here here's what I've learned here's what I think can you know, help you. And if you charge $50 for information that can save, you know, your audience $200, that's value. Or if you can, maybe not even in terms of money, if you know like a secret ab workout, maybe you don't have perfect abs, but this can shave off 
10 minutes off everybody's ad workout. Maybe that's worth, you know, $9.95. So figure out what your value is, try to sell it, try to price it at a good price so that you can make some money and your audience feels a good value and there's a balance.